for those of you of you that watch videos online, there is a video series called Catfish and Carp. Correct. Yeah, Catfish and Carp. Yeah. Catfish and Carp, and you've been doing videos for how long? About a little over two years now. I have watched a lot of them. You've got a number of videos out there. Yeah, you've got about 180 videos right now, and they they entail everything from equipment to fishing and baits and taking your, your, your the ponds yeah, in the boat yeah. and fishing, which those are very dear to me. Now, I'm sorry, but you need to introduce yourself to us and tell sure. us about you. Well, uh, my name is Luke Nichols. I was born and raised in Anchorage, Alaska. I spent most of my life living up in Alaska and uh, uh, came down to the lower 48 to, to meet girls. And uh, you know, cause you we, don't, we don't have a lot of those up in Alaska. And, uh, and Wonderful woman, been married for about 14 years, got two young boys, and I'm a criminal defense attorney out in Northern Virginia now. So, uh, but I really like big fish, and I like things that pull my drag, and uh, so I go out for a lot of catfish and carp. Well, we're really glad that you come down here. I didn't know that you was coming. I had a pretty good idea of a lot of guys that was going to be here, but then there's a lot that showed up that we didn't know about. Have you, Chuck, have you seen any of his videos? I've seen a few. They're pretty good. They're very interesting, entertaining. He has some good knowledge on them, and, and specifically the ones that stick to my mind are the different types of bait that he uses to catch channel cat. Yeah. You know, most tournament guys think, well, you know, Blues don't bite on that. Well, sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. But channel cat is a very versified fish, and one day you'll catch them on a hot dog, and the next day you'll have a jello hot dog, and it'll work for that. Yeah. The next day it'll be shad or bluegill or worms or whatever it is, and a lot of times you can catch it on all of them. And carp bait works really well. What I found is that with carp fishing and cat fishing, it's one and the same. Uh, I just recently broke my personal best channel cat fish at 23 pounds. I caught it on a number six hook with two pieces of rubber fake corn using breadcrumbs, jello, and sweet corn. Classic carb bait. I was catching 20 pound carb and uh, I often catch fish. I caught myself a nice little blue and then I caught a 23 pound channel cat fish and that's common. My best flathead, uh, 53 pounds, was caught on a mulberry flavored boilie, which is a European carp bait. So a number four hook and uh, a hook about that big and a, and a bait the size of a marble. Caught a 53 pound flathead. Yeah, it's a little unusual. A live bait, I think, is the best for flatheads and stuff. But you go out carp fishing and you catch a nice fish. So, like chumming with feed corn is a strategy I love to use. And it's great for carp, it's great for channel cats. Corn you get when hunting mm -hmm. season, mm -hmm. boil it up till it's soft, chuck it out there, and then put some feed corn on a hair rig, number four hook, number six hook, and you'll slaughter five, eight pound channel catfish all day long on that. And you'll now, get them. That, is that a, a legal thing in the state of Virginia? Yeah, chumming's legal in Virginia. Now, some states don't allow chumming, right. but we've got techniques for that. So there's a thing called a pack bait, which is a very common tactic for carp fishing. You pack the bait around your lead, chuck that out there, and then that ball of bait slowly breaks down and then your hook bait is right there in the pile. And that's not technically chumming because it's on your line when you cast it out. And so oh, uh, there's things you can do, little chumming techniques like that, which are kind of gray area, but, <coughs> but a lot of carp techniques work great for catfish. You know, um, I watched some of your videos. Like I say, I, a lot of my, I was telling you earlier, a lot of my work I get done at night because I spend so much time online answering questions and, and, and talking to people on the phone and uh, – you know, it just absorbs so much time that I get most of my actual work done late at night. So I turn the screen around and I'll turn uh, videos and stuff on. And I watched you catch some really nice flatheads yeah. in a couple of videos the other day. Now, um, Chuck and I talk about flatheads a lot. They're the, to me, they're the king of catfish. Uh, they're a little bit elusive. They're great fun to catch. Yeah. But as a tournament fisherman in our area, I know for us to do good in the tournament, you can't depend on that flathead bite. you got to go after the blues mm. because there's so more, many more of them. Yeah. Now, uh, the particular video that I remember is you and your son was out and you're on a pontoon and you're showing people how to catch the bait and keep it in the live well yeah. and all the stuff. And then you put some really nice fish in the boat. Yeah. And, and we're talking about daytime. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people think that flatheads is a strictly a nighttime fish, and that's not the case. No, no. 
Yeah, well, they're just like me. They get hungry all the time. Yeah, all the day and whatever. But especially as that winter, that weather gets cooler. I, I think it's all temperature related. Is my personal opinion. Uh, you know, I think when it's really hot, uh, they hunker down and uh, daylight. They avoid the daylight. And but you also you watch the bait fish and how the bait fish are moving. And in the summertime, as soon as that sun hits, the bait fish seem to come out of nowhere, and you you can hear the bait fish on top of the water, and you can hear things break in the water. Then in the fall, you get that more and more in the middle of the day. And so as the bait fish seem to come out more in the middle of the day, I think the flatheads do. So spring and fall, uh, I think daytime's just fine. And wintertime, of course, daytime I think is better. You know, but yeah. but yeah, that's just me. You know, but. And then, of course, there's always that one fish that does whatever the heck he wants, whenever he wants. You, know? hey, you get a rogue with any breed of anything. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. You get a rogue. We got Chuck. He's kind of a rogue. <laughs> you got some questions for him, Chuck? Uh, yeah. Do uh, you do a whole lot of blue uh, fishing for blue cats? Yeah, blue cats are probably the most prevalent in uh, Virginia. So I do a lot of that. And, and But uh, I live on a, a reservoir in Virginia that's got – some flatheads so we don't get a lot of flatheads in virginia the state record 66 pounds so they're, they're not really a huge uh, species in virginia or a prevalent species but i just happen to be near one of those places that's good for flatheads so i, I uh but probably most of my my catfish is channels or blues so. okay uh so with doing all your uh, research for carp bait and sure. everything uh and the you know the europeans and it's coming over this way yeah. to the amino acids and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. Have you been studying into that, trying to use the amino acids? Oh, here. Sure, they have a whole bunch of different different uh, ones that work good, but I, I think those only really matter with uh, chum. <laughs> if you're not chumming, I don't think it makes too much of a difference because, you know, with the amino acids in these uh, um, bite enhancers, things that make the fish hungry, make them want to feed more aggressively, it only takes effect if the fish has been eating it. You know, oh, it takes a while for the amino acids and stuff like that to, to trigger more feeding and stuff like that. So I think with chums, it works really well. You get a fish seeing a lot out of it, but I don't know if it makes a big difference on hook baits. I mean, if you just got one bait and you're not chumming, just give them what they're eating naturally anyways, what they're used to seeing it. But that's just my thoughts. You know? Right. So you haven't seen, you use a hook bait, and and seen them go into a, a type of a little feeding frenzy uh, after using an amino acid type. Well, well, maybe maybe I'm not uh, on the same page with the amino acids. Like in, in carp fishing, we've got a lot of these um, chemical feed enhancers they use in the, the boilies and the carp baits. Right. The same thing they put in cattle feed to make the cattle want to eat more, so that they put on weight before slaughter. Right. You know the things that they do that so those uh, so I think they're amino acid based and there's a bunch of different chemicals they use. I, I've seen them use people use that. I haven't used them tons, but because they're expensive, you know. Oh, but I I do more do-it-yourself stuff like the feed corn. But but my understanding has been that they work really good for chums because they get the fish feeding more aggressively. You, know, you build it up over time, but you know. When I've just got a one thing I'm putting on my hook. I I, I go natural, so because yeah, you know the a lot of the guys that you know in Europe they're using the ones that are supposed to uh, to to get a, a fish. They call it like snapping at the bait. Mm. So um, you know they'll get a whiff of amino acids, and it's something that their body really needs more of yeah. to grow. Um, so even though that there's a, a cold front, or yeah. it might not be time for them to feed. By them getting some of that amino acids, they may want to eat it anyway because their body's telling them they need it, not because they're hungry, but because they need it. Yeah, and and, and but uh, those European pains over there, they, they've got a real different style because, like, if you want to fish over in Europe, for instance, you, you it's not public water; it's almost all paid lakes. You know, so you go there, you pay a ticket. And there's a lake, and there's a there's a like 20 docks on the lake, and you get dock number 15, and that's your spot. And so that's it. You, you can't just go around and pick wherever you like. You you rent a spot on the lake, and that's your spot for a week or half a day. So 
they, they'll sit there and chum that spot and try to build the fish in there, get them feeding in that area. They'll build it up over a couple of days, and you got to fish it. So in America, we go around chasing the fish. And in Europe, they try to draw the fish into them because they can't move around as much. So chumming campaigns are a big deal over there. And I've seen them use a lot of those chemicals like betamine and, and uh, different, different feeding triggers. But they're almost always using them in part of a chumming campaign. Okay. But that's but you know, who knows? You know, maybe putting it just on a hook bait's the way to do it. And a lot of people will take raw betamine or amino acids and they'll just dip the, the bait straight in. They'll have a little little pot of it and just dunk it in before they cast out. So yeah. What do you think of the first annual catfish conference? I was fabulous. I knew it was going to be a success, but I think it exceeded expectations here. I it. Yeah. I yeah. It. And you drove in from Virginia. Yeah. And, and there's several people from your area that showed up. Yeah. we. I saw some guys from Arizona. I saw right. some guys from New York and New Jersey. I met a couple other people from Virginia. You know, uh, Chris Flores came in from right. New Mexico. So. Yeah, it's huge success. Yeah, huge I think success. so. I think nobody could argue otherwise. Though. Well, we appreciate you coming up and spending some time with us and talking about your videos and stuff. And if you'd like to tell everybody how they can watch them, because I don't mm -hmm. remember. Yeah. I've got it saved on my computer. Sure. But that's not going to help me. And, and that way they can go and enjoy those the same as the rest of us. Sure. Uh, the YouTube channel is Catfish and Carp. And my website is www.catsandcarp.com. That's awesome. Thank right. you for Thank your you. time. Thanks for your time. We're looking forward to talking with you again. All right. My pleasure. All right. Thank you. I'm in. Bye.